Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 Radio Program. I'm Daniel Davis. How many of you out there listening today have suffered from something known as burnout? In other words, you kind of find yourself in a rut and you're not sure how you got there or what you can do about it. Some of the things to watch out for if you happen to experience this is things such as exhaustion, insomnia, running thoughts, emotional outbursts, pessimism, and you know that time when things used to excite you, well, you just don't feel any interest for in general. Well, when it comes to burnout, our guest today has a simple philosophy. When you have energy problems, you need energy solutions. Our guest is a highly gifted and sought-after energy medicine practitioner who inspires deep gratitude and respect from her clients. She is a board-certified holistic registered nurse and certified gemstone and diamond therapy practitioner. She introduced the merging of gemstones and diamond therapy to the holistic nursing community, unlocking and expanding the practice holistic health care to facilitate health, happiness, and freedom. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today our guest and author of the book From Burning Out to Burning Bright, How to Get Your Life Back by Healing Your Thoughts, Memories, and Emotions, our guest, Jennifer Marcinell. Jennifer, thank you for being on the program today. Hello from Houston, and thank you so much for having me. I'm a super fan of your program. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> now, t- let's talk about burnout. You know, in this day and age, it seems like there's a lot of that going on, and I would have to say a lot of it, too, has to do with just a lot of the stimulus that I think that a lot of us experience each day. W- what are your thoughts about that? You are so right. We are absolutely our energy fields are absolutely to the point of supersaturation, a little scientific term there for you, but we're overstimulated it from a 360-degree angle from our families, from our home, our coworkers, you know, unrealistic expectations, unhappy, you know, thoughts from or emotions from other people, and even, you know, electromagnetic radiation or, you know, in electromagnetic frequencies from our electronics. We are completely overstimulated. You are exactly right. You know, and you can see, too, with the kind of information that people are taking in this day and age, you know, whether it's from social media or television, whatever the case is, I think one of the biggest things to consider is the idea of keeping up with the Joneses. And when you're not measuring up to this you know, sort of facade that's being put out there that says, well, if you're not here, here's the way to do it, and if you're not there quite yet, maybe there's something wrong with you. You can see how people could just kind of throw their hands in the air and give up. Oh, you're exactly right, because what we're really talking about are unrealistic expectations. And, you know, we're talking about goals or dreams or expectations that have been put on us that we've accepted as our own that didn't come from us. They came from other people with typically an agenda of some sort behind it. You know, um, I grew up, um, I'm the adult child of two workaholic parents, so I grew up with that expectation. I I kind of sometimes joke that I came out of the womb working. (laughs) You know, my first sales job, I was, you know, nine years old when I picked apples off the tree and started selling them to the neighbors for more allowance money. So, (laughs) But, yeah, we get these unrealistic expectations that come from, you know, what I call social consciousness or from the workplace. Or, you know, I certainly did two decades' worth in sales. And talk about unrealistic expectations, right? And we, we, find, we find ourselves energetically ex- accepting other people's goals or thoughts or opinions or what they think is right for us, and we accept it as our own. And then we're constantly like the hamster on the habit trail, just running the wheel, trying to make up or meet some goal that was never even intended for us. And that's just not a very good place to be. And there's no way to manage your energy stores when we're constantly on that wheel, just running and running and running. Yeah, no kidding, I'll tell you. And then you kind of figure out, well, now what am I going to do now? You know, how do I change course and, you know, find myself going in a better direction? Now, what was your experience about getting burned out? (laughs) So I, my case was severe and not everybody's has to be right. It's it's a continuum. Um, My case was extreme. All right. So I, as, as you know, I was trained and, and worked for many years. I was classically trained in Western medicine model where I worked as an ER and a cardiovascular intensive care nurse for a number of years. So I grew up in, you know, 
professionally, personally and professionally in the healthcare system. So I experienced firsthand what it's like to be in the healthcare profession with these unrealistic expectations of, you know, trying to save everybody's life and being held responsible for outcomes that don't have that aren't my responsibility, right? I'm not every patient is supposed to have a good outcome. There are other things, you know, such as karma reincarnation and other responsibilities that a, a, a client or a patient is responsible for. And so I experienced that type of burnout firsthand as a critical care nurse. And then I went into the high pressure world of sales for, you know, 20 years where I was rapidly promoted, rapidly went into the C-suite and into senior leadership and management constantly chase, you know, chasing unrealistic expectations to the point where I literally went into a health crisis. And I talk about it in great length a bit in my book, where I literally, my energy field was so erratic and so damaged that I was vibrating at a rate that was pretty much incompatible with life. And it was presenting itself as I was actually suicidal. And I nearly, I nearly lost my life that day. And I'm very, very fortunate. I am one of those people that I had heard about. We've all heard about, right? But I'm one of those people who was blessed with a second chance. I um, survived when I had a remarkable spiritual experience that showed me what was going on behind the scenes and what injuries had I had energetically t- had taken place, right, the energetic injuries from all of the energetic issues the unrealistic expectations, the hate, the anger, the rage that people were putting on me and I was putting on myself and towards other people. And it was a massive wake-up call, just like anyone you've ever heard about that got that second chance to come back and get it right. That's exactly the way it was for me. It was like, okay, I've got to completely change my life. I was so far off of where I should be and that it nearly it nearly ended it for me. So I'm very, very grateful to have that second chance to come to get the opportunity to, you know, find my new ways and, and get started on my incredible healing journey. Now let's go ahead and talk about for the listeners uh, the common symptoms that, uh, you know, people come to you that shows you uh, that they're having classic burnout, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of the major symptoms that I see is, number one, anxiety. Um, right now in my entire client base, and I have local, national, international clientele as well as corporate clientele, and people that are finding their way to me, I would say the number one symptom that we're seeing is anxiety, where people are experiencing such edginess and anxiety and fear that they can't soothe themselves on their own whether they're new to meditation or contemplation or yoga or things like that where you can actually settle and get still and get your energy fields settled, get your mind calmed down, you know, really get centered and back in yourself. They're just getting to the point where they can't even do that on their own. It would be like, you know, if you, if you normally had one cup of coffee and you have a normal reaction to that, they say it's as if they've had 10 or 12 and they just can't seem to shut it off. So I would say that's one of the major symptoms. Another major sign and symptoms that people are coming to me with right now outside of anxiety is they can't sleep. They can't get to sleep. They can't stay asleep. And when they do get to sleep and they wake up the next morning, they're just as tired as when they went to bed. They're, the body's not actually releasing its unwanted energy during the night and rejuvenating as we sleep, as the energy fields should naturally be doing. So I would say... Out of everything that I see, I would have to say those are the two, the top two symptoms that people are coming to me with right now. Now, uh, it was really unique that you talk about diamond therapy when it comes mm-hmm. to helping people heal. But uh, first of all, uh, let's talk about what you mean by feeling burned out as an energy problem that must be treated with energy healing. Yeah, right. So, um There are different levels of burnout, and everyone has unique causes because we're all very unique individuals with our own life experiences, right? But what I see across the board is every client that comes to me for burnout, they have energetic, we we have our physical body, but we're more than our physical body. We're multidimensional beings, which includes 
energetic anatomy. Most people are familiar with the chakra system. If you've ever taken a yoga class or you've done any type of study, uh, you've probably heard of the, the chakra system, right? That's a part, that's a basic part of our energetic anatomy. We also have what's called the meridian system. So if you've ever had acupuncture or you've ever had any type of Chinese medicine, you're probably familiar with the meridian system. These are parts of our energetic anatomy. And those are the basics, but every client that comes to me has some type of energetic injury or damage to their energetic anatomy from their burnout. So it's a symptom and a cause as well. So once our energetic anatomy needs, you know, gets damaged, it needs repair. And when, uh, there are different modalities that can assist with this. For example, Reiki. Most people are familiar with Reiki. They've probably heard of it. That's healing touch through the hands. There's acupuncture that can assist with this as well. And my specialty, I specialize in Reiki, but I also specialize in gemstone and diamond therapy. And of all of my favorite modalities that I work with, gem and diamond are my favorite. My clients get the fastest, deepest, most lasting results from that type of a therapy. Now, um, what I found really unique, too, in your book is you talk about uh, energy bodies. What exactly are those? Yeah, so a part of our energetic anatomy, a part of what we're made up with, is that we have what's called subtle bodies, S-U-B-T-L-E. And you're right, I talk about it extensively in the book, and I've given some illustrations and explanations, so if anybody's interested in more detail, you can read about it in the book. But we actually have more than our physical body. We also have what's called a supra-physical body. We have the emotional body body, the karmic or memory body, the mental body, as well as the intuitive body. And then beyond that lies our spirituality, beyond that. So these are actual, they're actually parts of our energetic anatomy. And those of us who are trained in certain types of energy medicine have the ability to see these, work with them. Uh, correct them, create dam- uh, you know, correct damages, repair injuries, and provide nourishment and uh, nutrition to get these bodies up working. So our subtle bodies, this more, a little more advanced part of our energetic anatomy, needs care and clearing and cleaning and maintenance the same way our physical body does. Now, how is it that you go ahead and you uh, talk about gemstones and diamond therapy, and how does that exactly work? Oh, yeah. So everything, if we go back to basic biology for just a minute, and we'll kind of go basics because it might have been a minute since we've had a biology class, but everything is made of energy, everything. And everything comes down to even like, say, the, the, the atom, okay, positive, negative, and neutral, and everything vibrates. It has a frequency. So every atom should be in balance, positive, negative, and neutral, and it should be vibrating at the appropriate frequency to have health and wellness. Now, you're probably familiar with herbs. Most everyone has taken herbs or has probably a a cabinet full. Um, Herbs come from the plant kingdom, meaning they have a plant matrix. And we usually typically take them by mouth. We take them with food or water. And each of those herbs within itself, they have their own healing frequency. They vibrate. Let's say garlic, for example. Garlic is actually a medicine. And the, the garlic actually has a vibratory rate to it. And then when we take it into our body, it helps our cells achieve a bit of stability, a new vibratory rate of the garlic that provides it's a medicinal purpose. It helps the cells come to that level of frequency. Now, herb plants coming from the plant kingdom, or herbs coming from the plant kingdom, have a shorter um, mechanism of action, if you will. That's a medical term, meaning a shorter half-life. You're familiar with pharmaceuticals. They do exactly the same thing. They cause a vibratory rate change, and they have a half-life. They last so long until the body excretes it or removes it. Now, gems and diamonds come from the mineral kingdom. 
So where plants have a plant matrix, gems and diamonds have a crystalline matrix. So they have a much broader spectrum of healing ability. Each gem has its own healing frequency, and it has a specific way that it helps bring balance and nutrition and healing frequencies to the body. And then there's diamond, which is the master crystal, which has the very, very few, very specific therapeutic diamonds are called therapeutic seven color ray diamonds, and they have their own healing frequency and the ability, a special ability to repair structures. Like, for example, diamonds can repair energetic injuries or damages to an actual chakra or even to a meridian, a damaged meridian. So much like the plant kingdom, they come from the mineral kingdom, and they have a crystalline matrix, a broader mechanism of action, and they give much longer-lasting healing abilities because of their crystalline matrix. Well, you know, it's all pretty incredible when you think about things such as the inner bodies and the chakras and meridians, and Mm -hmm. people might, you know, who aren't familiar with this might think, well, you know, this sounds like metaphysical far-out stuff here, but you found that people have actually been able to heal and clear themselves and kind of get back on track and get excited about life again. Uh, Give us some examples of that. Yeah, so I'm so glad you brought this up because these are very exciting times because gem, uh, gemstone crystal healing, gemstones and diamond therapy is now mainstream. Uh, for example, in 2018, the New York Times ran nine articles on crystal healing. So if you go even to New York City, the, all of the upscale hotels have been offering crystal therapy in their spas for a number of years. So we're very, very fortunate that what was once considered maybe woo-woo or esoteric or metaphysical is now an accepted practice. And, you know, if you think about it, our medical technology is based on crystal technology. The quartz is the crystal that runs your watches, that runs your television. And there are crystals and diamonds located in, that are utilized in modern medical technology, such as MRIs and CT scanners. So it's been used for a long time. It's just mainstream now out in the, you know, this holistic revolution that's going on now for alternative medicine. But um, some of my, uh, one client example that, you know, comes to mind, someone that I I just saw this week, um, was really having difficulty moving forward with life. She was experiencing and and has been experiencing significant issues with her endocrine system, meaning her hormones just can't get balanced. And she's had a lot of issues with her emotions, kind of like on a roller coaster where she wants to feel happy and joyful but emotions were, you know, bouts of crying and things like that. Uh, And she just has not been able to get her health under control and get her life moving forward. She knew that there's a career step she's trying to make, but she just couldn't. And she found her way to me through uh, my own radio show, Nationally Syndicated out of Seattle. And her issue is what in the first couple of sessions was that her brow chakra was completely damaged and leaking the healing energies of the indigo ray. So one of the first things that we had to do for her that gems and diamonds did for her was to repair the brow chakra itself. And this is only her second session, and she could feel the difference even during session. She said she could completely feel the difference, the pressure in her head being relieved. Uh, Headaches were dissipating. The running thoughts were dissipating. Her ability to relax, she was able to relax her mind for the first time in maybe even years. So even during just her second session, she was already experiencing, you know, dramatic symptoms for her, symptom relief, and that sense of peace and well-being. And she's well on her way to making significant strides in her healing. So her endocrine system, when it's ready, will be able to correct as well. You know, you bring up something that I think is really important to address, and I know we talked about it uh, earlier, and that is the idea that uh, this day and age with all the technology, especially the handheld devices, Mm -hmm. that people seem to keep their mind busy a lot. You know, you're too busy looking at your Snapchat or whatever it is. 
uh, mm-hmm. constantly uh, texting and being in touch with people on the phone. Uh, you know, and, and it seems like nobody really takes the time just to be, and I like to say this because I mean this with a lot of respect, to be bored. Yeah. <laughs> you know, still. I mean, people but think boredom mm-hmm. is this bad thing that we need to run away from, but it's like, no, I think boredom is a great thing because it sits you down, you're quiet, you don't have anything to do, and what's so wrong with that? you know, once in a while. Right. Well, you're exactly right, because the part of what we're actually talking about here is bringing science and spirituality together. Because you're, I'm so glad you brought up cell phones and electromagnetic radiation, because I think this is a very key point of what's going on. And what I'm seeing across the board in my practice is injury from the electromagnetic radiation from our devices. And I can share with you from the energy and science perspective that, it is uncanny how many of my clients have damage to their throat chakras, which appears to be related largely to their cell phones because it's right there in mm-hmm. that area. And the, the throat chakra is really taking the brunt of that. And what I see with, for example, um, the millennial uh, population, I have a huge millennial population in my practice is I'm seeing a lot of electromagnetic radiation in their crown chakra. That's the top, you know, that's the chakra on the top of our head that reaches up and helps us connect to the divine. And once that, it, and the m- number one thing they say is that I'm praying for answer. I'm praying, I'm asking God for help, and I can't hear the answers, right? Or I'm, I'm looking for inner guidance. I'm looking for my divine guidance, and I can't get the, I can't get the answers. And when that EMR gets repaired, it released and the chakra becomes repaired and kind of works, my clients just love it when they're like, oh, my God, I, that was an energy problem. I had an energy problem. It was an energy solution. There's nothing wrong with me. I just needed help energetically, right? And now with that scientific correction and repair and healing, then they're better able to be able to get into meditation or prayer or contemplation, whatever word you know it by, but to get to that where they can take, you know, maybe even 20 minutes a day to get still and how important it is for our, us scientifically and for us spiritually to be able to get our energy fields still and to connect to the divine. So I'm so glad you brought that up. and. It's exciting to see how many people now these days are starting to really crave that connection and really starting to understand it's time to move away from the doing and the rushing, slow down a little bit, and be able to give ourselves that opportunity at least once a day to become still. And how important that really is to burn bright. Well, I can tell you, I've been doing that for a lot of years, and it's certainly worked for me. You know, people always seem to feel that you seem very relaxed. I mean, it doesn't mean that I don't have a little bit of stress here and there. But, you know, for instance, the phone that I'm talking with you on today is a landline. I don't even own a cell phone. When I leave the house, there's no telephone. And Mm -hmm. a funny story about that, I remember there was a kiosk in a mall one time, and uh, they baited me with, hey, do you have one of these? And it was, you know, they were waving a cell phone around to sell. And I said, no. Well, don't you, would you like to get one? I said, I really don't have a need for one. And the lady says, well, what if there's an emergency? And I said, you know, it's funny you should ask that. So I went on to tell a story when I was still living up in Portland, when I was uh, out in the Columbia Gorge and we broke down. And sure enough, as we're sitting on the side of the road just, you know, waiting, all of a sudden a car shows up and is asking for directions. I said, by the way, I'm broke down here. Do you mind if I use your phone so I can call a roadside service? They said, no, sure, no problem. So I went ahead and I got that going. And about every 20 minutes, somebody kept coming by and asking for directions or something and would say, well, you know, it's this way. And uh, by the way, can I go ahead and use your phone just to check the status on a tow truck that's coming out to see us? So we sat out there for a good three hours enjoying the Columbia Gorge (laughs) with every 20 minutes somebody coming by with a cell phone, being able to help us out so we could eventually, you know, get the tow truck, which we did. And, you know, uh, so there was my emergency. (laughs) I love that story. I love that story because 
kind of what I'm what I'm really kind of feeling and seeing from you is because that's a part of you were connected to nature. You're up in the gorge, you're relaxed, and you know we're all one. So the universe will send us what we need when we need it if we're aligned in that still place. Just because we have an emergency, to your point, doesn't mean we have to overreact or go into 911 fight or flight. We can stay calm, connect to, connect to the universe, and allow the universe to bring these delightful people that you met. And look, you know, new friendships, new relationships, and all for being still calm and relaxed, even though you had an emergency. I love that story. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, you also, uh, I know as I was reading in your book, you talked about a time that uh, the speaking up for yourself was very healing. And oh, you can yeah. see how people can really get burned out when they feel like they're either not heard or they feel a fear, for instance, that they're kind of being pushed around. And I don't mean physically. You know, can you do this for me? Yes. And you're always saying yes. I mean, you realize, for instance, like in our 20s, we finally learn to say no because we get sick of always saying yes to people. And you can see mm-hmm. how that burns you out. It feels good to finally say, no, I don't want to do this to help you, you know, sort of a thing. Oh. But let's talk about oh. how learning to speak up for yourself has been healing for you. Oh, my stars. So I grew up in a very, very structured environment. And I grew up where, and you'll see it in my, you read it in my book, I was harshly punished for minor infractions or sometimes punished when there was no infraction. So a part of what I was conditioned, you know, the, the best that my mom knew at the time was to condition me and my siblings that you had to res- always respect your elders. And we weren't, I was actually punished for standing up for myself in my home environment. It's just a part of, you know, some of the things we had to learn as a family unit, what we went through in this lifetime. But I was not allowed to speak up my truth. And I carried that into adulthood. And I carried it into my practice as a critical care nurse. And then I carried it into my practice in corporate America in sales and, you know, doing startup companies. And A part of that was because I was not allowed to stand up for myself and speak my truth, the more that I was not allowed to do that, the more my energetic anatomy was damaged. And over time, my, I'll just, one one of the damages that I received was severe damage to my throat chakra, just severe. And it was manifesting, scientifically speaking, as recurring uh, throat infections, I would get um, epigl- like an epiglottitis where I would, I would lose my voice. I would, I would have severe coughing. And like it, once or maybe even twice a year, I would get these bacterial infections and I would actually lose my voice. That's how it was manifesting in the physical. And that was a part of what, you know, the universe and the divine was telling me is, You've got, to, you've got to start getting this healed so that you can speak your truth because each and every one of us is unique. Each and every one of us is here to do something that only we can do. We wouldn't be here at this time if we weren't and if we hadn't agreed to do it. So a part of doing that is speaking your truth with love, of course. You don't want to, that does not mean we get permission to just bludgeon people with the truth or be rude about it. We want to be true, necessary, and kind, and we want to use the correct words. But it's important that when something is not right in your life, that you're able to have healthy boundaries and speak up for yourself when you need to. And as I started becoming empowered, as I started healing, and as I became empowered to be able to speak my truth, the more that I did it, my entire life started shifting. I mean, I know... I left corporate America and, as you know, started up my own company, which has now become the Burn Bright Today franchise. And the whole part of this healing of speaking my truth is to be able to be out here in the media and speaking with companies and individuals and helping people find their truth, whatever that is. It's unbelievably healing to be able to stand up for yourself and actually speak the words of what you know to be true. And again, it needs to be true, necessary, and kind, right? We want to use the correct words. 
it's unbelievably healing and it it really has changed my it's changed my life completely i now have i'm now living the the life that i love <laughs> absolutely you know and, and again as you said when we come to express our inherent truth and it isn't about being right or being treated well mm-hmm. but it's just about that feeling you have and when you really take a look at that our feelings a lot of times could be the cause of a lot of things that a lot of people suffer from and it's really amazing when you can get in touch with that and you can express yourself. I was just recently watching the movie uh, Pretty Woman with Julia Roberts. Oh, yeah. And yeah. there's a scene where they're in the bathtub and he says, I am angry. It took $10,000 and three years of therapy to simply say, I am angry. angry. <laughs> but it's yes. funny how often many of us are that way. Oh, my stars especially if we were not allowed. Um, I mean, I don't know how you grew up, but I grew up where we were not allowed to express anger. Or, you know, if, if, something, if something had happened that we knew was wrong, I was not allowed to defy my mother. So I was never, when there are times that it is very emotionally healthy to experience anger. There are situations in our life that we should rightfully experience the emotion of anger. But it needs to be appropriate levels of anger, and it's meant to get our attention because something is off, something needs our attention, something needs to be changed. A behavior needs to be changed, a relationship needs to be changed, maybe a job or a career needs to be changed. And if we're feeling that anger, we need a cell, a safe, private, confidential place to be able to express it in a way that is healthy. Because what we don't want to do is get to where we go to rage or levels of unhealthy anger. Because if we do that and we get that far, number one, we really damage ourselves energetically. We damage other people if we release unbridled anger on somebody else. Number one, we're energetically damaging them. It bounces back. We're energetically damaging ourselves. And we're creating what's known as karma, which we, you know, we really don't want to, we don't want that kind of karma being built up. So I love the story that you're talking about them in the bathtub. It's absolutely okay to be angry. And there's times that we should be angry. And there's a lot of my clients have that come up a lot in session. And that's one of the reasons that I so recommend that as a part of self-care that every person right now could really benefit from self-care and to find a practitioner that you resonate with that is board certified, that is held to the highest levels of integrity to make sure that when you're in session with someone, whatever type of practitioner that is, that everything is private and it's confidential and it will not go anywhere. It's meant to be therapeutic, it's meant to be released, and it's meant to be healed. And to make sure that that person that you are expressing your anger with will not use any form of that information against you in some way. Because we sometimes often do that, right? Especially women, we like to vent, we have our girlfriends. There's a time to safely vent, but boy, with anger, we want to be very discerning how we do that. And we always want to come from the mode of healing, self-care and healing, and a safe place to release it so that we can have healing energies come in behind it so that energy will dissipate and joy will then come in behind it instead of, other unwanted, lower vibrational, uh, you know, emotions that we really don't want in our life. Right, exactly. And, you know, get to that place where you have clarity of thought and then you begin to see solutions to situations that you've really never seen before. And that's, you know, really a big key is that, you know, you become creative again. And that's where we really should be working from is a place of creativity, I mean, for should you have a belief in God, you know, if we're made in God's like image, it's we're co-creators. That's what it is. It's that right. simple. <laughs> and right. when that's not happening, boy, it's life can get pretty aggravating and even gray. You are so right. And so you're bringing up, you know, the emotional body. So the emotions are created, um, you know, in the emotional body is where they're generated and created. And the emotional body has the karmic or memory body in between it and the mental body. But what can happen is when we experience very powerful negative emotions, you know, the emotions can trip the mental body 
and the mental body can get way out of control. And those two start feeding off of each other. And when we get our mind and our emotions in a vortex like that, you're, you are so right. The mind will start out creating our divinity. And we want to be, have, like you said, we want to be co-creating with the divine. Whatever words you know it by, it doesn't matter, right? But you want to be connected to the universe and to the divine in your own special, unique way. But we want to be relying on our creative abilities to create the life that we love rather than emotions that are running amok and triggering our mind. And those two can make unhealthy playmates when they're not, in, when they're not aligned and at the right frequency with each other as well. So I'm so glad you mentioned that. Well, what people certainly need to do is uh, take a look at how to get a copy of your book from Burning Out to Burning Bright. How can they do that? Oh, thank you. So, yeah, so it is on Amazon. Uh, just search From Burning Out to Burning Bright, Get Your Life Back by Healing Your Thoughts, Memories, and Emotions. Or you're certainly welcome to come over to my website where I offer it at a significant discount off of the Amazon price. So you might want to buy it off of Amazon if you prefer to do that. But I'm more than happy to provide it at a deep discount on my website, which is burnbrighttoday.com. There's lots of free information, and there's an entire book page, and you can take a peek at it over there. So come on over. Well, very good. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing just some of the information that you have available in your book. And people, I think, will begin to understand as they read this, the clarity uh, as well as the reality uh, of what we've been talking about here, that this just isn't all hokey medicine, but this is actually, they'll begin to see an inherent truth. They might even call it common sense. (laughs) And they'll realize, oh, okay, I I really get this, and it just makes sense, you know, especially as we were talking about you know, being in your truth, you know, things like that, or, you know, mm-hmm. finding yourself in ruts. I mean, there's just so much here, and when you read this, they'll come to grasp and realize, you know, not only is this possible to change, but, boy, there's some changes that I re- really need to, I think, make starting now. So yeah, even if it is just putting the cell phone away for a day, do you think you can mm-hmm. do that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Crazy yeah. stuff. Jennifer, thank you again yeah. for being on the program today. Any final thoughts for our listeners? You know, um, thank you so much for having me. And I would, just, I would just like to say that, you know, we were meant to burn bright. And it's, it's a divine birthright to be here right now. And if you're out there and you're feeling up against it, and maybe things, you've got a lot flying at you, especially maybe even more than you've ever had in your life, and maybe perhaps you're in that dark night of soul right now, give yourself a break. It's not your fault. There are solutions, and there are healthy, natural healing modalities with no side effects that can help you move from the darkness of burning out to the light of burning bright. All you have to do is ask for help. So thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, and I'm such a fan of your show. Thank you for doing what you do. Well, thank you again. It's been a pleasure to have you. We want to thank you, the listeners out there, for joining us. You can discover more at beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. We encourage you to sign up for our weekly e-newsletter. Keep up to date with what's going on in the world of Beyond 50 as well as our upcoming shows. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for joining us. This is the Beyond 50 radio program. Remember, live your day past halfway. Halfway.